Every mouse has a polling rate, or how often it reports its position to the computer or CPU. The base polling rate on USB is 125 hertz, or 125 times every second. But some mice have adjustable polling rates to help decrease latency and help you pop off those trick shots with higher accuracy. Like this, the Corsair Saber RGB Pro, a lightweight 74 gram gaming mouse. The non-RGB version saves you 5 grams, making that 69 grams. Nice. Get subscribed. Now, I would say that this is more of a palm grip mouse because it feels pretty large in my baby hands. It has Omron switches, an 18,000 DPI optical sensor, a little light on the side to tell you what sensitivity is set at, two switches on the side, scroll wheel, obviously, onboard memory so that you can keep, among other things, the two zone RGB in check no matter what computer you plug its braided cable into. What makes this mouse so hilarious to me though is its 8,000 hertz optional polling rate in the Corsair IQ software. 8,000 times every second can this thing tell the CPU where it is. It is so demanding that when you select the 8,000 hertz polling rate, it actually prompts you saying that you need at least an eight core i9 or Ryzen 7 CPU. And when turned on, like me, its CPU usage is nothing short of massive. Even on a 16 core Ryzen 9 5950X, you can see at least six cores light up with activity when you're just moving it around the mouse pad. So what happens when you turn it on with only two cores. So here we have an Athlon 3000G set up with a Radeon R9 290X. It's a fairly okay setup for playing less demanding titles. So let's go ahead and power it on and try out some less demanding titles. So if you just went to Best Buy with a $50 budget and unknowingly purchased this mouse, it won't just immediately kill your frame rates. But once you download the Corsair IQ software and start playing around, you could accidentally stumble upon the 8000 hertz polling rate and enable it and find out that your games aren't playing quite as smoothly anymore without that higher end hardware. So usually this system has no trouble playing games that you might pick this mouse up for like League of Legends or Counter-Strike Go. And even with some settings tweaked will play modern titles like Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So if you go to the Corsair IQ software and select the mouse, go to device settings and then select the polling rate at 8000 hertz it will, like I said, prompt you to have an i9 or a Ryzen 7. <laughs> but, you know, let's select it anyway, just to see what happens. So let's just try out League of Legends, a game that all of us can rage to. So, as you can see with some minions on the screen, we're getting about 160, 200 FPS. Not bad. But once we, say, click on the minimap and start moving the mouse around, the FPS drops down into the single digits. That is a huge strain on this poor little CPU. Again, once you stop moving the mouse, everything goes back to normal. Let's go ahead and fire up Warzone, a game that this CPU and GPU combination probably aren't meant for, but it can pull off. Go ahead and load up a practice game just to see what kind of frame rates we get. So if we just use the WSD keys to move around, we're getting about 50, 60-ish FPS, but once we start moving the mouse around, Things start getting very broken. 50-ish FPS, not too bad. Start moving the mouse and things start getting very stuttery again. Again, stop moving the mouse and we're back up to 50-ish FPS. Start moving the mouse again and things start stuttering. So yeah, Warzone, not a pleasant experience with the 8,000 hertz polling rate turned on. But again, you don't have to have that 8,000 hertz polling rate on. And obviously this system is not very strong for Warzone. I'm just showing what it does to a game that's already kind of loaded up on a CPU. And last but not least, let's try out the game that this mouse was designed for. Counter-Strike Global Offensive. The frame rates that game can produce are absolutely massive. So taking a CPU that can barely push those frame rates and hammering it down with this mouse is gonna be pretty funny. <laughs> Again, this is the kind of title that you are most likely to buy a mouse like this for. I mean, obviously it is meant for the high precision, just flick shotting that is required with these types of, you know, split second video games. And also this title is something that you would realistically play on a system like this that has very little CPU power 
relatively okay GPU power and it produces really good frame rates on it. So we're getting about 150 FPS without touching the mouse. And then once we start moving the mouse around, things start getting kind of stuttery. You can even get it down into the 20s. Not to say it's not playable, it's just the frame time inconsistencies can really screw you up. Especially when trying to, you know, move just like a little bit here and there. It, it, it kind of goes further than you'd expect because you're not seeing that visual response. And just to prove that this CPU is perfectly capable of playing Counter-Strike, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the 8000 Hz polling rate. Go ahead and turn that off and we're over 100 FPS and it stays there, you know, regardless of which way you look. It's not going anywhere. A much more playable experience at that 125 Hz polling. Don't get me wrong, for $60 this is a perfectly good mouse. It's low weight, responsive, accurate, and seemingly well built. I actually quite like it. I like mice that are wired and uh, very simple. After all, I'm a simpleton who daily drives a Logitech 203, which is like the cheapest thing they make. But make sure that you have the kind of hardware that Corsair recommends before switching on that 8000 Hz polling rate. In fact, if you have some lower end hardware, don't be afraid to try out, say, 1000 Hz or 4000 Hz. It might not be quite as taxing as that 8000 Hz. I just wanted to make this video to show you guys what can happen when you cross that line. <laughs> because, wow, this thing can pull some serious CPU usage. So that's gonna do it for today, guys. Go ahead and do me a favor and leave a comment about some other crazy taxing hardware you've seen. Hit that like button, get subscribed, and like always, I'll see you tomorrow.